And welcome, my friend, once again to the next episode in the Red Delta Project podcast, teaching you minimalist approaches to diet and exercise to help you maximize your potential. My name is Matt Schifferly, founder of the Red Delta Project and author of the books that sponsor these episodes, so I don't have to annoy you with annoying ads for sponsored products and stuff. Books like Grind Style Calisthenics, Smart Body Weight Training, the complete RDP library is down below in the description. You can find that as well as the free ebooks I have for you over at reddeltaproject.com. Today's episode, we're kind of doing a bit of a follow-up on micro-workouts. Right now, I'm writing my book on micro-workouts. Micro-workouts being small workouts for big results, things that take less time, less energy, but they add up to a hell of a lot more productivity and benefit over time. So some of you said, great, okay, this is awesome when it comes to training and working out, but what about diet, specifically weight loss? Is there a micro-diet approach that we can be using? This is a very good question to be asking because even though exercise can take a lot of time and other resources, trying to manage one's weight and diet is often far more labor intensive. And put it in perspective, right? If you work out four times a week for an hour or so, that's four hours a week. But when it comes to managing your diet, that's managing things every meal, every single day. So it's something that you're doing all day, every day. That's why a lot of experts or people who are fans of various diets will say it's not a diet, it's a lifestyle. Mm, doesn't mean anything good. It means this is gonna take so much time and energy and effort on your part that it now has to be this huge major thing that you have to base your entire life around. And that's fine if you really want to do that sort of thing. But personally, I believe we should be at a point with our knowledge and our understanding of health and fitness that you shouldn't have to adopt such lifestyles just to look and feel good. We should be able to use exercise and particularly food in a minimalist way so that you can look and feel your best without making fitness the biggest, most cornerstone of how you live your life. Well, there is a strategy that I've written about in one of my free eBooks. There's a link down below to my calorie hacking eBook, which is essentially micro dieting. The reason why micro dieting works is it because it helps you circumvent one of the biggest hangups and shortcomings that come with almost any sort of weight loss and dietary approach. You see, I get people coming up to me all the time and they say, Matt, I adopted this new diet or this weight loss program or fasting or whatever, and it worked great for a certain period of time, but then I stopped changing. I stopped losing weight. What did I do wrong? Of course, it's no surprise when it does happen. A lot of experts say fad diets don't work and everything, but the reality is it actually did work. It worked extremely well because the long-term effect of any sort of particularly restrictive dietary eating style is actually to prevent weight loss, not cause it. The reason is very simple. It's because whenever we subject our body to any sort of new environmental conditions, whether you change how you're working your body through your workouts, you change something in the environment, like your sleep patterns, or even just going from a hot to a cold climate, you are essentially changing the information your body's receiving. And what happens, we humans are very adaptable creatures, we say, oh wow, something's a little bit different, and it ups, uh, kind of upsets your balance, your homeostatic state. Now your body's number one goal, actually your body's only goal in life, is to regain a state of homeostasis. Because if it doesn't regain that state of homeostasis, you're basically circling the drain and you're not gonna be around very long. So you change your diet, you change your workout, you change your environment and in some way, it upsets that homeostatic state and your body says, this is a little bit off, I need to adapt. And that's usually why we do these things. Your body adapts, so it builds muscle, it builds strength, it improves proficiency and speed and all these sorts of things so that you can adapt to the training you're doing. But when it comes to diet, we somehow forget this fact because we change our diet and we restrict it or we change how we're eating in some way, shape or form and we upset our apple cart, we get out of homeostasis and our body starts changing and adapting. We're like, this is awesome. But we forget the fact that that adaptation period is supposed to be temporary. It's not something you can prevent. It will happen regardless of your willpower and discipline. And the, biggest, the bigger the change you made, the longer it takes you to get there, but it will eventually happen. So when that happens and you get back to homeostasis, 
you stop losing weight because your body is now figured out, good, this is how I can get back to a level baseline under these different conditions. And you've figured out how to get keto ice cream bars and how to have paleo pancakes and what restaurants serve the best uh, vegan lunch and all these sorts of things. You've figured out how do I get back to a good, comfortable baseline under these new rules? So you can see why this is such a frustration because no matter what kind of approach you adopt, any habits that you maintain consistently for long periods of time will eventually get to this homeostatic state. So is there any way that we can effectively prevent that from happening? Well, the quick answer is no. Homeostasis is not something you can prevent. And even if you can prevent it to a large degree, it will come at a severe cost to you, meaning it will cost your health, it will cost your well-being, and in more extreme cases, it will cost you your life, because that's how people starve to death. That's how people have such poor health from some such sort of uh, restrictive environments that they're no longer able to survive in that environment. So it is in our best interest to get back to homeostasis. But what does this mean for our ability to effectively control weight? The answer to that is you don't try to prevent homeostasis. You use it to your advantage. So instead of adopting some sort of a very restrictive diet that you just follow endlessly and you allow yourself to get back to homeostasis under those new conditions, you apply a micro diet, if you will, which I like to call calorie hacking, where you're purposely upsetting the apple cart, you're burning more calories than you're taking in for a specific short period of time. And then you go back into homeostasis proactively. So instead of letting your body force you back into it, you put yourself back into homeostasis on purpose. That way you're in control of it. Plus you are picking time frames where you say, I'm gonna put myself in a negative calorie balance for a short period of time, it's gonna suck, it's going to be only so long, and then it's going to end, rather than being this endless slog into the horizon. And there's a number of ways you can calorie hack, but the basic idea is that you pick either several hours, several days, a couple of weeks may happen. Some of the research I've come across is that you can go as much as maybe 10 days to about two weeks before your body can start to regain homeostasis on its own. Again, it depends on how extreme that change is. If you really overhaul your diet and go extreme, it's gonna take longer for you to regain homeostasis. Plus, it's also an individual thing. The more diets you've done, the more uh, types of extreme dietary fluctuations you've done, the more your body has been trained to regain homeostasis very quickly. This is why people like figure competitors and wrestlers and people who've tried to lose weight for events find that over time they have a harder and harder time getting back into contest shape because every time they do it, their body's like, oh, this again, okay, we can adapt even faster now. So instead of losing weight for two weeks, you lose weight for five days and then it's right back because your body knows what's coming. And your body is like, I know how to get back to homeostasis. This is great. Meanwhile, we're scratching our heads and we're frustrated on why am I not losing weight when this diet helped me before? So some of the most popular calorie hacking methods, uh, basically what you're doing is you're taking your baseline caloric intake for the, and uh, dropping it like substantially. Uh, fasting, of course, is one of the most popular ones. Uh, you can do this, it doesn't really matter the time frame. it's just 24 hour fast, 16 hour fasts are very popular. Uh, skipping a meal is one of my most popular ones, just skip breakfast, skip dinner, skip whatever it is. Uh, you can also uh, half your regular portion sizes. So instead of saying, I usually have a foot long sandwich at the lunch counter, I'm gonna have half of a sandwich at the lunch counter, right? Whatever it is, is just half of what it is. One of the great things about calorie hacking is it's much less than normal, which of course means you have to establish normal first, which I'll get into in a little bit. But the point is it's much less. You're not trying to split hairs and be like, okay, so cheddar has a little bit less calories than Swiss cheese on the sandwich. No, you're trying to make a big difference. This is calorie hacking, not calories sanding down with fine grit sandpaper. Uh, you can also get rid of uh, a lot of the other calories outside of your meals. So no more snacking, 
uh, zero caloric intake from beverages. Usually when people come to me and they want to lose weight, I tell them go after beverages first because it's way easier to consume a lot more excessive calories through drink. And that goes for alcohol, sodas, juices, coffee drinks. I even tell people, forget the smoothies and protein shakes. People are like, no, that's healthy and stuff. It's like, it's calories in liquid form. And a lot of the times, if you go to gyms and you go, what are you, what's your pr protein smoothies like? If you really look at it, it's like it's the equivalent of five Snickers bars of sugar and fat and everything else. So liquid calories are just a calorie and sugar bomb into your body. So get rid of those for a time being or even minimize it as much as possible. It's a little bit more uh, energy intensive, but you can also calorie hack through exercise where you go out and you expend a huge amount of calories in one shot. And that one is a little bit tricky. You need to be in shape for it because I'm not talking about going and doing an hour long hike. I'm talking about stuff that takes most of a day. Like the other day, a buddy of mine, he rode 100 miles on a single speed mountain bike. It was like 10 hours of riding or something. It was over 8,000 calories. That's a calorie hack. And he's not doing that all the time. That's like a one time deal and he's probably not gonna do it for quite a while. Go out, usually when it comes to physical activity, calorie hacks, my general rule of thumb is three hours or more of an activity. It could be hiking, cycling, running, any sort of thing, but something that you can do for three hours or more can burn a significant amount of calories right out of your system. But before you get all excited about calorie hacking, you're like, this is great, I'm gonna go do this. Know that you have to get your ducks in a row first. One of the biggest mistakes that people make when they try to lose weight is they're coming from a place where their diet is relatively unhealthy and they have an unhealthy relationship with food and then they're trying to lose weight. That's like someone who is a really bad driver trying to become a race car driver while drunk. You're not in a good place to make good decisions when it comes to effective use of food at that point because you're not using food effectively for your general health and well-being as a baseline. So that's why I always recommend don't even think about weight loss and calorie hacking if your diet's all over the place. If every day is all over the place, you have a lot of negative emotional eating with food, uh, you eat like hardly anything all day and then you're binging and you've got a, motion, a source of a binge purge cycle with foods and stuff like that, I always tell people get healthy eating first. So very basic stuff. Get to two or three square meals a day. Mind your three Ps, right? And that's the cornerstone of healthy eating, protein, plant, and portion. And again, try to minimize or limit your luxury calories, watch the liquid calories, lots of whole foods. You know, this stuff you do not need me telling you, you know this sort of thing. But get to a healthy place with food first. That alone may take care of a lot of weight issues, but without that, calorie hacking doesn't really stand much of a chance of working. Because the reason why calorie hacking works is because it works with homeostasis, not against it. So you want to establish a homeostatic baseline with a healthy level of food intake, good foods, not eating too much, not eating too little, very regular dietary habits like clockwork. Then once you're relatively healthy, you can quickly throw yourself out of calorie balance, burn a lot more or intake a lot less for a day, several days, maybe as much as like 10 days or so. And then you purposely go back to that baseline. And again, you need to know where that baseline is. If you don't know where that is, you're just gonna constantly be seesawing back and forth. So it's like, I fasted all day. And then the next day I went and had three pizzas or something and you're just compensating and you've got this rocking effect going on, which doesn't really get you anywhere, but it's extremely stressful on both ends of the spectrum. And I know I'm just barely scratching the surface on this whole calorie hacking, micro dieting sort of thing. So I entertain thoughts and questions down below in the comment section. As always, reddeltaproject at gmail.com is the best place to reach me. Don't forget, I got the free calorie hacking ebook down below in the description you can download as well. I don't even want your email address or anything. Literally just click it and it's yours. And as always, I sincerely appreciate you listening or if you're here on YouTube, you're watching, of course, and I'll talk to you next week. Be fit, live free.